is not the issue. I'm talking about drawing a line in the sand, dude. Across this line, you do not, uh, and also, dude, Chinaman is not the preferred, uh, Asian American, please. Walter, this is not a guy who built the railroads here. This is a guy who peed on my- What the fuck are you- Walter, he peed on my run. He peed on the new truck. You're out of your element. This Chinaman is not the issue, dude. So who? Jeff Lebowski. Come on. This other Jeffrey Lebowski, the millionaire. He's going to be easier to find anyway than these two, uh, these two, uh, yeah. And he has the wealth, uh, the resources, obviously. There's no reason, no fucking reason why his wife should go out and owe money and they pee on your rug. Am I wrong? No, but... Am I wrong? Yeah, but... <clears throat> okay, that, uh... <clears throat> he elaborate. That clears his throat. <clears> throat> <laughs> <laughs> that rap really tied the room together, did it not? Fucking A! <laughs> and this guy peed on it. Donnie, please. Yeah, I can find this Lebowski guy. His name is Lebowski. That's your name, too. Yeah, this is the guy. This guy should compensate me for the fucking rug. I mean, his wife goes out, loses money, and they pee on my rug. That's right, dude. They pee on your fucking rug. <laughs> Close up on a plaque. We pull back from the name Jeffrey Lebowski engraved in silver to reveal that the plaque from the Variety Clubs International honors Lebowski as Achiever of the Year. Reflected in the plaque, we see the dude entering the room with a young man. We hear the two men talk. So, uh, and, and this here is the study. <laughs> you can see the various commendations, honorary degrees, etc. You know what I mean, huh? Yes, oh, very impressive. Uh, please, uh, feel free to inspect them. I mean, they're there for a reason. Uh, I'm not really you. Uh... Please, please inspect my accoutrement. Okay. We are panning the walls, looking at various citations and certificates unrelated to the ones being discussed off screen. And that's the key to the city of Pasadena, which well, Mr. Lebowski was given two years ago in recognition of its very civic. Uh, Okay. Uh, there's a, a Los Angeles Chamber of Commerce Business Achiever Award, which is given, or well, not necessarily given every year. I mean, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> given only when there's a worthy somebody especially. Hey, is this you with Nancy? That is indeed Mr. Lebowski with the first lady. Yes, taken with... Uh, Taylor and Lebowski on the right? Of course, uh, Mr. Lebowski on the right. Uh, Miss Reagan on the left, taken with... He's handicapped, huh? Uh, Mr. Lebowski is... Disabled, yes. And this picture was taken when Mrs. Reagan was first lady of the nation. Yes, yes. <laughs> Not of California, I mean, California. Far out, man. And in fact, he met privately with the president. <laughs> no, unfortunately, there wasn't time for a photo opportunity, if you know what I mean. Nancy's pretty good. Wonderful woman. Uh, we were very... Uh, these are Mr. Lebowski's children, so to speak. Different mothers, huh? No, they, uh... Well, I guess he's pretty, uh, racially, uh, but pretty cool. The, the, the cheat, no, this is not for a conversation. <laughs> this, they're not his. They're not literally his children. They're the little Lebowski urban achievers. Inner city children, I promise, but you know, without the, uh... I see. <laughs> Do you, do you need water, man? Uh, <coughs> oh, sorry! <laughs> Just need a white Russian, thank you! No, no, we, we can provide that. I just got worried for a second that <laughs> Duke Nukem walked in here. Um, see, without the means for a higher education, so uh, Mr. Lebowski has committed to sending all of them to college. Jeez, think he's got room for one more? One? <laughs> uh, you never went to college? Well, yeah, I did, but I spent most of my time occupying various um, administration buildings, <laughs> smoking tie stick, breaking an oro to suit. Oh, don't know I, I talked about all that. And bowling! I'll tell you the truth, Brad. I don't remember most of it. Jeez, fuck me! No, thank you. <laughs> 
Exactly. <laughs> Our continuing track and pen have brought us onto a Framed Life magazine cover, which is headlined, Are You a Lebowski Achiever? Oddly, the dude's sunglass face is on it. We realize that under the magazine's logo and headlines, the display is mirrored. We hear the door open and the whine of a motor. The dude, wearing shorts and a bowling shirt, turns to look. So does Brant, the young man we've been listening to, who will now in the script be called Brant. So, he wears a suit, his hands are clasped in front of his groin. And that's you. Entering the room is a fat 60-ish man in a motorized wheelchair, Jeff Lebowski. Okay, sir, you're Lebowski. I'm a Lebowski. It's terrific. I'm very busy, so what can I do for you? He wheels himself behind a desk. The dude sits, facing him as Brand withdraws. Be back later, see you guys. <laughs> okay, bye. Well, sir, it's this rug I have. Really tied the room together. You tell Brand on the phone. He tell me. So where do I fit in? Well, they were looking for you. These two guys. They were trying to. I'll say it again. All right. You tell Brand. He tell me. I know what happened. Yes. Yes. So you know they were trying to piss on your rug. Did I get on it on your rug? Well, you mean, did you personally come and pee on it? Hello? My... Do you speak English? Polly, you studying Daisy? I'll say it again. Did I urinate on your rug? Oh, no. <laughs> like I said, we'll pee on the rug. Hello? Hello? So every time, I just want to understand this, sir. Every time a rug is mid-durated upon in this fair city, I have to compensate the- Come on, man! I'm not trying to- <laughs> Excuse me? Sorry! <laughs> I'm sorry, he wasn't supposed to be in here. I'll take him out. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. This is a very official meeting anyway. Come on, man! I'm not trying to scam anybody here. I'm just- You're just looking for Anna, for Anna. Well, get rid of that. Are you employed, Mr. Lebowski? Look, let me explain something. I'm not Mr. Lebowski. You're Mr. Lebowski. I'm the dude! So that's what you call me, that or dude, or his dudeness. Oh. Or El Duderino, if you know you're into the whole brevity thing. Are you employed, sir? Employed? You don't go out and make a living dressed like that in the middle of a weekday. This isn't. What day is this? But I do work, so if you don't mind. No, look, I do mind. The dude minds! This will not stand, you know? This will not stand, man! I mean, if you're right from your my wife... My will... wife is not the issue here. I hope that my wife will someday learn to live on her allowance, which is ample. But if she doesn't, sir, that will be her problem, not mine. Just as your rug is your problem, just as every bum's lot in life is his own responsibility, regardless of who he chooses to blame. I didn't blame anyone for the loss of my legs. Some Chinaman in Korea took him from me, but I went out and achieved anyway. I can't solve your problems, sir. Only you can. The dude rises. Ah, uh, fuck it. Sure, fuck it. That's your answer. Tattoo it on your forehead. Your answer to everything. The dude is heading for the door. Your revolution is over, Mr. Lebowski. Condolences, the bum's lost. As the dude opens the door. My advice is, do what your parents did. Get a job, sir. The bums will always lose. Do you hear me, Lebowski? The bums will always... The dude shuts the door on the old man's bellowing to find himself in the hallway. In a high, comfort hallway, Brant is approaching. So, uh, uh, how is your meeting, Mr. Lebowski? Okay. <laughs> the old man told me to take any rug in the house. In the walkway, a houseman with a rolled up carpet on one shoulder goes down a stone walk that winds through the back lawn past a swing pool to a garage. Brant and the dude follow. Uh, Manolo, will you go ahead and load it in this guy's car for uh, uh, the dude? It's the Baron? Dude's point of view. <laughs> Tracking toward the pool, a young woman sits facing it, her back to us, leaning forward to paint her toenails. Beyond her, a black form floats in an inflatable chair in the pool. Well, uh, enjoy, and perhaps maybe we'll see you again sometime, Duke, right? Yeah, sure, if I'm ever in the neighborhood, need to use the john. Arcing around the woman's foot, a close-up, as she finishes painting the nails emerald green, the dude is looking. A wider shot, 
The young woman looks up at him. She is in her early 20s. She leans back and extends her leg toward the dude. Blow on them. <laughs> the dude pulls his sunglasses down his nose and peeks over them. Who? <laughs> she waggles her foot and giggles. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Go ahead. Blow. The dude tentatively grabs hold of her extended foot. You want me to blow on your toes? <laughs> uh-huh. I can't blow that far. The dude looks over at the pool. You sure you won't mind? The man is bobbing in his inflatable chair and he's passed out. He's thin, in his thirties, with long, stringy blonde hair. He wears black leather pants and a black leather jacket, open shirtless, exposing fine blonde chest hair and pale skin. One arm trails off into the water, and next to it, an empty whiskey bottle. Dieter doesn't care about anything. He's a nihilist. Practicing? The young woman smiles. You're not blowing. Brandt nervously takes the dude by the elbow. Uh, our guest has to be getting along, Mrs. Lebowski, without the boy. The dude grudgingly allows himself to be led away, still looking at the young woman. Your buddy? I'll suck your cock for a thousand dollars. I never get lines like that. This totally sucks. <laughs> You need a thousand dollars. Brandt releases a gale of forced laughter. <laughs> Wonderful woman, very free spirited. Uh, I'm still saving up. Uh, we're all very fond of her. Brandt can't watch though, or he has to pay a hundred. <laughs> that's a uh, wait. What? <laughs> that, that's that's marvelous. Uh, he continues to lead away the dude who looks back over his shoulder. I'm just going to find a cash machine. And see. When exactly do we lose our R rating? That's what yeah, I Yeah, we lost it right there. Actually, since we've already gone and lost it, Ellen, would you do us a favor and read that spectacular line one more time? And yet, as uh, uh, John St. John had requested before, operatically. <laughs> Start your recorders now. <laughs> which line? Uh, that For a thousand dollars, you know which one. <laughs> Dirty ones. The one about sucking dicks. The last page, the last page. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Madame Butterfly, I think, right? That Who said this wasn't a classic no, panel, was right? Musetta from La Boheme. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, there is a lot in opera where they may not be saying that, but yeah, they're saying that, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't think they're ever not saying that in opera. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. All right, guys, let's clear the palette once more. Let's go back to our cards one more time. <laughs> And uh, I'll do this one, I guess, as uh, Hermaeus Mora. Glory to the Hypnoto. Uh, I'll, I'll, sure, I'll do this one as Anarchy from uh, Batman Arkham Origins, if anyone has put that recently. I often fantasize about dressing up like a, like a colloquial weave while riding a pony. Down with the establishment! Okay, Lieutenant Dwight D. Barnes from uh, Half-Life Opposing Force. Son, you better call Kenny Loggins because you're in the danger zone here. I like you, boy. Why don't you come over to my 
my house and fuck my sister. <laughs> oh, all right. Oh, I'm sorry, that was from Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> This is, a, uh, this is a personal request from Mr. St. John here. Uh, I didn't write it, but the card is for you. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the Pittsburgh Penguins. My grandmother could play better hockey. I approve that message! <laughs> I guess I'll do this one in a storm spirit. From Dota 2. Oh. If you and a friend find yourselves being chased by King Cheetah, you have but one option. Put and pop, no, trick your friend. <laughs> that was a sympathy clap. That was a total sympathy clap. <laughs> yeah. This is this is Broodmother from Dota 2. Okay. okay. A flashlight and some duct tape. I think I have everything set up. That was a scary voice. That was a, you know, if you had read Bunny's line in that voice, everybody would have been running for the door. You won't. Now, one of the things we do here at Voice of Palooza is we create a game completely from scratch. Uh, does everybody here have a pen on the panel? Do we have a pen? Can, uh, right uh, the uh, have yeah. Can those who have the 20 pens in the crowd bring your pens back to the front? We just need a few. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for Bibi, everybody. All right, so what we are going to do is we are going to take your suggestions. You will create a character, a brand new character, for each of the people up here. We'll find a location. We'll find a number of different things in here. In fact, for some of the lines of the characters, we will reach to our deck of cards here today, randomly and occasionally pulling a new card that the audience has actually written. But what I would like to do first off is we will come up with the name of the game we are about to create right here on the stage. Uh, let me see, raise a hand if you have an idea for a... Uh... Oh God, why are you saying What's that? Blue Stinger. Blue Stinger. Oh fuck. The Dreamcast game? Really? <laughs> wow. The upgraded version. You know, there's somebody out there, some dev is going, we can redo Blue Stinger. <laughs> like it's never been done before. <laughs> And in fact, we are going to do Blue Stinger like it's never been done before. So, that is the name of it, but we don't know what this is. Where, I need to show the hand, where does this take place? Space. This gentleman over here. Capitals Practice Arena. Seems rather specific. <laughs> uh, let's see, look, yes, the young lady who's glowing, positively glowing. The more. I like that. I like that better, but we may be able to put uh, some Capitals practice rank in here somewhere. But let's say it starts at the morgue, and somewhere, somewhere within the story, we, we have a reason to go to the Capitals hockey rink. Sound good? Do I need to be writing this down? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can copy off our pages, John. <laughs> I'll just, I'll just use yours. That's okay, we'll you're allowed to, it's right here. We'll share. Here, here, John, it's right here, I wrote it down for you. And it's, by the way, Baru Stinga. Okay, <laughs> we, from now on, from now on, whenever we come to the title, John, you will say it, okay? Baru Stinga. Stinga. Or, yeah, basically <laughs> copying from you, John. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, I'm going to need an everyday household item. <laughs> How about? I'm just wondering how long I can continue to not hear anything you're saying. How? Wait a minute, what? What? Wait a minute. Wait, him first. Shut up! A dildo desk lamp. Thank you. Is that something you have in your dorm, sir? 
No? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can't have enough of them. No, there's like a whole spray of them in, uh, in Sky Mall on the way over. Yeah. <laughs> Another household item, yes, sir? A toaster oven? Yeah, it's not a dildo toaster oven? No? Okay. Almost some said to you, I was not aware it existed. How about a douche I just want to know. In what world is a dildo desk lamp an everyday household appliance? In Maryland. That's Maryland, yeah. Mexican jumping beans. Mexican jumping beans. All right. I take offense to that. Now I need. Now I'm gonna. I'm gonna have a show of hands for this one because we'll never ever hear all of you one time. But I want you to take a second and think of an exotic weapon. An exotic weapon. I saw that hand right there first. Young lady, stand up. Do not say dildo desk lamp. We already have that down. <laughs> your mom? What is your name? Leah? Leah's mom. Is a weapon. <laughs> Leah's mom. Uh, yes, another weapon. Portal gun? I, 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 you think that the uh, blue stinger might get sued uh, for... <laughs> We'll call it a, a, an Orphis gun. It's perfect. Right. Orphis gun? Orphis gun. It's like a Orphis gun, but not suitable. Orphis gun. All right. Uh, let's see. We got trying to get somebody from way back there. The gentleman way back there. Yes, you. No, don't look back. It's Glasses. Right. Stand up. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, hold on, take not there. you glasses, him glasses. Yeah, stand back up. Ribbon, no, glasses, ribbon, up. you, 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 yeah. yeah. The with the beat. Say it. The man with the beat. The what? We already have a dildo something. They can't all be dildos, sir. I appreciate your, your, your enthusiasm remember, for dildos and various Remember, things, but... it is not that kind of a blue stinger, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, plaid. Yes, that's you. Trash, trash compact. Very nice. Trash compact. <laughs> you have to really, really prepare your phone. Oh, Roomba. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, the, it is Blue Stinger. It takes place in the morgue. Uh, somehow we're going to have to work in the Capitol's hockey rink. There's a dildo desk lamp, a toaster oven, and a Mexican jumping bean somewhere within the story. Uh, the weapons, Leia's mom. An orifice gun and a trash compactor. You'll be pretty dead. You'll be pretty dead. Now, what we're going to do, Aaron, uh, copy off of John. I, I'm, I'm glad that I that I just walked into this. So, I just, okay, so we've got an orifice gun. I'm like, excuse me. Orifice gun? No, no, no. Orifice gun isn't the big story. The big story is dildo desk lamp. Ah. So now we're going to need a hero. A hero for our story. Give me a name for the hero. Yes, sir. Ralphie is the hero of our story. Ralphie, hero. Now, I need a name of a villain. I see someone in the back with a hat. Stand up and yell very loudly. Meat stick what? Jack Staff. Meat Stick Jack Staff. Wow. <laughs> Everybody has a Meat Stick Jack Staff in their life, don't they? Is it Meat Stick or Meat Stiff? Meat Stick. Well, that all depends. If you Jack Staff it first, it's going to be stiff yeah. meat. <laughs> All right, now we're going to need a sidekick. What's it, Mr. What? Mr. Pruners? 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 Mr. Rogers. I heard Mr. Rogers. Yeah, the crowd seems to like Mr. Rogers as the sidekick. It's a beautiful day in the night. <laughs> Sure, you're gonna now I need the name of a femme fatale. Uncle Phil. Hold on one sec. 
Uh, this gentleman, ever explained to him, what, what is it, sir? Moist preggers. <laughs> Moist preggers. Moist preggers. By the way, I, uh, I invited my friend Jim and his, his young son to come tonight, and I couldn't be more proud. Thank you, Jim. Remember, we've used these naughty words in a sentence. so <laughs> It's an educational experience. That's what it is. A real educational experience. All right. Uh, so, the hero is Ralphie. The villain meets Dick Jackstaff. The sidekick to the hero, Mr. Rogers, and the femme fatale is Moist Preggers. Miss Moist Miss, yeah, okay, let me try. Miss, Miss Moist Preggers. Miss Moist Preggers, all right. Moisty to her friends. <laughs> Moisty, all right, excellent. Now we're going to need I, what are we going to do? Let's assign the hero of our story here today will be Ralphie, played by Matt. We're going to make you Ralphie. Don't shoot your eyes. The sidekick, Mr. Rogers, will be played by John St. John. It's going to be nice today when I'm your sidekick. No, I'm suddenly very nervous. Meet Stick Jackstaff, the villain played by John Patrick Lowry. Ms. Moist, a.k.a. Moisty Preggers. The Femme Fatale. Well, I was going to give it to Ellen, but you guys seem to want to give it to Aaron. Uh, now you're our bitch. <laughs> well, all right. All right, so we're going to need some kind of a character then for Ellen. I'll come up with my own character. All right. I'll say we can always go with, with moisture I'll play the <laughs> So Ellen and I will just come in and out as any character that we so choose. Does that sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. All right, I'll start. So I, I, I'll, I'll start this off, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the story, Blue. Oh, wait, wait a minute. The story, Baru Stinga, <laughs> takes place in the morgue. It's late at night. Thunder and lightning crash. <laughs> The bodies cold, uncaring, inside of each of their small containers, locked in for the night. But a shadowy, meat-sticky figure <laughs> makes his way into the morgue. <laughs> Fresh meat. Reaching into each of the containers, he starts to pull out fresh cuts of meat. <laughs> oh, this one's a nice one. A little fat on him. Yeah. Yeah, oh, look at that. There's a nice rack. <laughs> rack of lamb, you fragos. <laughs> he reaches into his bag to grab a utensil to get the meat. The utensil is... Where's my orifice gun? <laughs> I could swear I had it here. Who are you? I'm the coroner. Excuse me, but you're going to need several forms filled out before you can investigate the corpses. May I have your name, sir? Uh, my name, my, my name is uh, 
is Mr. Jagstaff. <laughs> but you can call me Meat Stick. Well, Meat Stick, please fill out this form. And excuse me, sir, the orifice gun will have to be left with security at the front desk. Right, right. Sounds a name. Meat Stick Jagstaff. Place of birth. Yeah. Philadelphia, all right. <laughs> yeah. Social security number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> And what's this purpose of visit? Uh, food, fresh meat, all right. Here this, you go, miss. this alarms the coroner. <laughs> now give me my orifice gun. Yes, sir. Was there any particular corpse that you wanted to see? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 a, I'm a close relative, you see. I'm a close relative of, uh, of uh, all of them. I see. Excuse me a moment. She makes a phone call. The phone call goes to her young son, Ralphie. Ralphie, for heaven's sakes, get over here. What's wrong, Mom? What's going on? Well, I have a gentleman here who was very difficult to deal with. He was very slow to fill out the paperwork, and he has an orifice gun. An orifice gun? Oh, I'm very familiar with that one, Mom. I'll be right over. All right. Ralphie jumps out of bed, goes to the closet, and begins <gasps> to pull out his costume. <laughs> Let's go ahead and... This is a little tight here around the upper waist area. I'll put my brassiere on to make sure my form is legitimate. Now, don't forget to put on your love first. And you go on your sweater today, because uh, it's a little chilly outside, later. Mr. Rogers, I, I ask please if you would not hang in my closet while I'm changing. <laughs> you know, I will come out of the closet when you're a little older and can understand. Fair enough. All right. Well, if you're going to stand there, could you at least help me put these tights on? How about I just help you put them on? Wouldn't that be nice, neighbor? Sure. You're gonna like this. I'll just reach around here like this and pull Ralphie, it. short of words, decides to reach deep into his pile to get a response. Um, well, Mr. Rogers, uh, uh, you see, the problem is I've, 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 I've got a dick like a clam's nose. <laughs> and I'm really, I, I'm really honestly kind of self-conscious about it, and I really hope that maybe I can keep this on the down low, maybe? Well, then, um, for shizzle my nizzle. But I'm, I'm glad we can come to some form of an understanding. They decide to form a partnership to fight the crime of Meat Stick Jackstaff. We will call our team the... Neighbors. The Neighbors. We will be the Neighbors. <laughs> I'll be Jim Neighbors. Oh. You can be my rock. We should probably just get going. <laughs> Looking around the room, they try to find an everyday household item to bring with them to protect them. I found this dildo desk lamp. Would you like to use this, Ralphie? <laughs> Mr. Rogers, that doesn't belong to me or mother. Where did you find that? I found it under your bed, Ralphie. Just promise not to tell anybody about this. All right, this is our secret. Deal. <laughs> they head out of the house together and realize they have no car. Oh, shoopers. They well, must flag down a taxi that is driven by a character played by Ego Raptor. Hey, look, here comes the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. Let's flag it down. <laughs> Mr. Wiener, we require assistance. <laughs> that, was the, that was the stopping of the vehicle. <laughs> we figured as much. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you guys want a freaking ride or something? I, I don't know how I feel about this ride, but... It's okay. You get between the buns and I'll ride on the big wiener. As Ralphie and Mr. Rogers climb snugly into the wiener. Mobile. Wow. That is a tight fit, isn't it? No, oh, much more than I expected. <laughs> I need some lube. I've got mustard. 
we take a look back towards the morgue where things are getting very uncomfortable between Meat Stick Jack Staff and Really? It's the getting porter. uncomfortable there? Serious? <laughs> Quite comfortable, actually. Two big hunks jumping into my pile of meat. <laughs> anyway, go on. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the morgue. I'm sorry, Mr. Jackstab, but it's... there's another form you're going to have to fill out. Ralphie, where are you? Oh my god, Ralphie, please hurry. <laughs> please call me meat stick. Yes. And speaking of meat sticks, this guy's got a stick done in. <laughs> now, for some rump roast. I love me some rump roast. Would you would you prefer some Mexican jumping beans? Or or I or some piss flaps? You, you mean you mean. As he's thinking of his answer, he reaches into the pile and pulls it from within. They don't allow you to have bees in here. But you see, I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Come on. <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the wiener mobile. Oh my god, these are my jams. Do you like them? Well, I, I, I was previously a fan of Kesha, but now this is really starting to dig into my brain. Oh, by the way, I never introduced myself. My name is Must Preggers. Most Perners? No, it's Most Preggers. Most Pernamines? Oh, get the buttons out of your ears. It's Must Preggers. Oh, well, you have to get off of me first. <clears throat> Moist Preggers? Sorry, your face just seemed like a good place to sit. Oh. They look at each other after this uncomfortable moment. Their eyes meet. <laughs> it's, um... It's genuinely nice to meet you, Miss Moist Preggers. Was that like a meat pun? Because we're in like a big winner. <laughs> Let's just keep driving, please. All right, from Brown. <laughs> That's the sound cars make. That's when Mr. Rogers, feeling uncomfortable, reached into his pile and decided to break up the conversation with this gem. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a gem! <laughs> yes, Mr. Rogers? Well, neighbor, it's my dress. Stapler saying, you goddamned asshole. <laughs> oh, that's right, you helped me with my outfit. I didn't help you with yours. I'm so sorry. Mine's in the toaster oven. Well, let's go ahead and get that out. Oh, this is a nice shade of chartreuse on you. It is my signature color. Well, sure. At that moment, the Wienermobile hit a telephone pole. <laughs> oh, my God! Oh, shit. I didn't say that telephone pole that was right in front of us. It happened to be right in front of the morgue. Well, that's very convenient for a taxi. Thank you, Miss Moist Preggers. Yeah, um, you're welcome. By the way, can I, like, join you guys in your little adventure? Please do. <laughs> We've got a new special neighbor friend. <laughs> yes, please come along. <coughs> they make their way to the front door of the morgue. Quick, kick on the front door, Mr. Rogers. Okay, I'll do it. Say, isn't this where they pack the meat? Let's, let's please not, not encourage Miss Preggers, please. You know what I was thinking the other day? Like, why am I even driving an Oscar Mayer winter mobile? Like, where did All I right, get you know, it? I'm gonna go and get the door. <laughs> Kicking in the door and stopping the conversation. The morgue is open. The three of them stare within, the smell of slowly roasting meat making their way out. And suddenly, they hear the voice 
of the villain. <laughs> Come one step further, and the corner gets it. And I mean gets it by the meat stick. No! Mom! Not again! <laughs> you stop right there, bad man! <laughs> oh, Ralphie, it's so good to see you, but why are you rubbed raw? <laughs> Uh, well, after this battle, I have something to tell you, Mom. But until then, let's go ahead and finish off this baddie. Oh, you think you're man enough, do you? You think you're man enough to take on the Jagstaff? The Jagstaff, I tell you. Oh, I do. Because while you stand there with your badge to get in here, I say to you, sir, badges? Badges? We don't need no stinking badges! <laughs> And she works here, and I can come in and out of here whenever I please. If I could be anyone on earth, it would be Kim Jones. And I wish this person knew how to ride. <laughs> I'd let him nuke my country, if you know what I mean. Nobody knew what he meant. <laughs> It was a soliloquy. <laughs> oh, now, Ralphie. I got, I got that. I got that. Right here. No, Ralphie. No, no. Make him let me go. It's I okay. Can't. It's I okay can't. because I managed to sheathe before he left here for battle the one weapon I knew that would completely destroy a villain such as Jack Stab himself. Leah's mom! <laughs> ah. 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 Where's my all of his gun? No. It's no use. It's no use against Leah's mom. Leah's mom is every villain's, villain's kryptonite. Curse you. Curse you, you. You, you are a bad, bad, bad man. That's what you are. A bad, bad man. All right, Ralphie. Grab me by the ankles. Good. Good boy. Start spinning me above your head. That's lovely, lovely. Now, smack the jackstaff. Go on. Smack him. Smack him. I'm smack sorry, the jackstaff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mom. Yeah, spank me. Spank me. I deserve it. I deserve it. Oh, it's, it's not working as I expected. He's suddenly getting into it. Uh... Ralphie, I think you should push him into that trash compactor and push the button. That sounds like a great plan. I don't think I have the strength to do so. If only I had someone to help me. <laughs> Of course I'll help you, but first, I like how you on the horn mint stuff. Can you tell me like what you do with your sausages? Because they smell like so good. And, like I was like I was hoping you could tell oh, me. All right, well you see, you first you saute, oh, and then you fill it. You see, Mr. that's like your voice. What are you doing? I thought we had a connection. No, as a matter of fact, oh. we. <laughs> Suddenly, Miss Moist Preggers was moist. And I think I'm pregnant with the famous, the devil's baby. That was when Ralphie went slightly mad. <laughs> Ralph said slightly. Please be careful. We can't do anything without the hippo. <laughs> I resent your comment. I'm a little overweight. It's just water weight. There's no reason to call names. Ah, oh, the guilt, the guilt. I meant to call your mom. I meant to pick up a phone and call. Wait a minute, you're not my mom. You're Leah's mom. That's right. Get in the trash pack, the man. She reaches out, grabs a hold of him, pulls him away from Miss Moist Preggers. Does anybody care that I'm pregnant? Cause like, oh my god, you guys are making such a scene and like, I've got a baby in here. Like, it could be like, and the two of them <laughs> fall into the trash compactor. Oh, this wasn't my plan. What's going on? Get off me, leave me alone. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Rogers, you're the only one of us that went to college for utilizing trash compactors. If you could please do something to enliven us on how to utilize this. If I want to talk about fellatio and prostitution, I'm going to talk about fellatio and prostitution. Okay, well, when, when you're finished with your dissertation, could you then please help with the trash compactor? All you have to do is push the button, you little faggot. 
<laughs> Ralphie reached out to push the button and with this powerful phrase, uh, Why would you poop on Anne Frank? He pushed the button. <laughs> Boy, this really hurts, but it smells good. <laughs> mm, I think I'll eat myself. Fresh meat, fresh meat. <laughs> oh no, no, Mister. Wait, what was your name? <laughs> Jack, Jack, me, me, Jack. I'm going to the light side again. Excuse me, excuse me, Ralphie. I'm, I'm on your side now. But Ralphie wouldn't hear of it again. I'm no, sorry. Ralphie. Have a little pride. You're right. I need to respect myself more. Then just throw me away at some wiener driving floozy. Uh, with a hot bod. She does have a really hot bod. Yeah, it? go for it. All right. Yay! Yay! Oh my God! The end. And they live happily ever after. Ladies and gentlemen, I think you all now know why that story was called. Blue Baloo's Stinger. <laughs> whip, whip, whip. And if you do know it was called Blue Stinger, please write it in our card and get it to us as soon as possible. <laughs> All right, so there we have it. What we're going to do now, we have a little bit of time left, about 10 minutes. So we will open this up to uh, any questions whatsoever from the crowd. Does that sound okay? Yeah. By the way, the best questions, in my opinion, do not involve video games or voice acting. They're personal questions. So ask personal questions, won't you? <laughs> really, really personal questions. The, all right, this gentleman over here who's really waving his arm the more you say personal. Go ahead. Do you like long walks on the beach with teddy bears? <laughs> Who the teddy bears not? can't walk. You've got to do all the carrying. There it is. There it is. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, you? Yes. What? All you gonna need to do in the last play for Blue Sting. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Let's do it. Hot mess. Yes. Hey, what was Blue Stinger chosen totally randomly or? Why did you choose that? I'm just because asking. that guy over there said it. And did you choose it because of my story about that stupid ass director that made me say it 152 times? <laughs> Thank you. There we go. <laughs> and now 154. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Even our own voice is a voice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna answer everything as Harvey Firestein. <laughs> Is it so wrong? Mother! <laughs> Gentlemen in red. Somewhat, but I have already assured him that if he takes the job from me, I will in fact kill him. <laughs> so, well, I, I have a question. question. <laughs> John, if your balls are of steel, uh, Aaron, what are yours of? Titanium. <laughs> Non-malleable, huh? Good luck with that. <laughs> uh, gentleman in the front, yes? Um, do you guys ever do voices while having sex? Yes. yes. <laughs> I did last night. Ah! Let's just say that there's... I was stroking it, but I, I would... Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Any, any uh, response on that? I mean, let, that question, I think, should go to you guys, because you're both voice actors. Do you guys go into character voice and role? Wait, it's such a role play. Enough. Interesting enough, we use our actor voices when we act like we're having sex. <laughs> but when you're really having sex? When we're really having sex, we use our... You mime. <laughs> right, right. We, we, don't, we don't use our voices at all. But the thing is, we only act like we're having sex when we're in inappropriate places. Do tell, like, uh, like elementary school, like, like the Republican Party. And if we were in the Republican Party, then we would act like we were in. So. I will, I will say, there's no, no more appropriate place to shout Thundercats ho. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Uh, I, I like occasionally to shout out his fox. I win again. <laughs> in the back with the hat, yes.
Axe from uh, from Dota. From the Vine. Uh, what did that voice sound like? <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Too many characters, too little memory. Uh, we'll get the, here. We got a few more times. This gentleman there. Yes. Come on, give it up. Give it up. <laughs> when I was younger, I had a club with my male friends where we show each other our dicks, not gay. It was just kind of a bonding experience. What was the purpose of that sharing experience? Man, I don't know. <laughs> But wait, yeah, he's cool. Cool. if we're if we're your new friends, does that mean we all have to become part of the D club too? Well, I mean, it's up to you guys. <laughs> we can go behind the curtain and do this. Yeah, but guess what? The, the well, biggest one up here, obviously, Ellen. So, <laughs> were you aware of that, John? I'm sorry. Well, I'm, we're we're, we're behind. Happened? No, I, I heard what you said earlier okay. from the card. So. It's not, it's not in smile. I think it's... There you go. Just say dildo desk lamp. I, I, I think everyone thinks oh, we're lesbians now. I don't know what's going on. Can I, can I have a question? Yes. Would Ellen please sing the line dildo desk lamp, opera style, please? Dance monkey! Or, or the I'll suck your cock for a thousand dollars line. I'd love to hear that again. <laughs> you know he's got his, his iPhone recorder going, and you know it's going to go on later tonight, uh, tonight in his motel room. Yeah, uh, basically what it's going to be is a uh, portal mod by midnight, so... <laughs> <laughs> Just the two words, dildo desk lamp, that'll be fine. I would like to say, you uh, cheeky dick waffle. <laughs> Will you say that? Also acceptable. <laughs> Uh, the gentleman over here has been wanting to speak all night. Oh, sorry, sorry. That was beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. I think that could be a hit. Yeah. I could yeah. die now. That's... All right, yes, sir. Stand, stand up. What, me? John, because I know you can get another one. Can I please have your MagFest scarf? No! You can They're have sold it. out, no. Damn it! Oh, snap. You Sorry. Them. You just got told. I did. Sorry. Okay, okay. Is there anyone else here who would like to request a, a random piece of clothing off of somebody on the stage? Adam's <laughs> bra. Naughty, naughty. <laughs> I see a hand way in the back there. Uh, no, we're all and white. The yes. Club. Wearing green and white, yes. What? If you choose one character from any animated history, what would you play as? George Washington. Who's that for? Anyone? For the whole panel, yeah. Okay. Uh, if you could choose any character in animated history that you could voice for, who would that be? Does that include video games or just animated? Animated. Animated, okay. Anything, anything. Uh, I like Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. I've always wanted to be Huckleberry Hound. Because he has a nice word to say about everyone. This is my favorite scene that Huckleberry Hound did. He was, uh, he was chasing uh, Dinky Dalton. He was one of the Dalton gang. And uh, he had Dastardly Dalton and Despicable Dalton and Dangerous Dalton and Dinky Dalton. Only Dinky said he growed up, so so Huck was was chasing him around, and and finally Dinky went to his hideout, which you could tell it was a hideout because it had a sign on over the door that says hideout, and so Huck decides to call him on the phone, and Huck calls him up, and Dinky answers the phone, and Dinky answers like this, Hello, is this Dinky Dalton? This is he. You got to admit, he's got a right nice voice on the telephone. I like that about her. He always had a good, good word to say about everybody, no matter how many times they dropped the safe off. <laughs> I, I can't do it, but I always thought it would be fun to be Ren and Ren Stimpy. Because I love 
love I love screaming, man. Even though it, it kills your voice. Excuse me. Sorry, that asshole's calling me while I'm on a panel. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on, man. How rude. <laughs> yeah, you. So, uh, Ren, we're back to Ren. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he's just all like, I'll kill you! Like, that's, it seems like it'd be really fun to do. And then it would hurt at the end of the day, so. I, I would like to actually do the voices of a dynamic duo, uh, best known as Montgomery J. Burns and uh, Waylon Smithers. Yes, it's me. Smithers, you're gay, aren't you? Uh, well, I'm happy, sir. No, I mean a brown trout fisherman, a fudge packer, a rump ranger. Ah, uh, for you, Mr. Burns. I mean, oh, for you, Mr. Ed Burns. No, wait, never mind. <laughs> no pity applause. Uh, for strict animation, uh, it's, it's a tough call, but I probably have to go somewhere with the brain from Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. No, you talk the same thing we do every night. You know, that one's fun. If video games are involved, it would have to be Geralt of Rivia from The Witcher. I just love The Witcher series so much. So. Anything by Mel Blanc. Yeah. Anything by Mel Blanc. You know, that, I, I have to tell a quick story. When I was out in L.A., I went by the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and right over by the Jewish section, there is Mel Blanc's tombstone. You can drive right up to it, get out, and uh, on the front of it, it says, that's all, folks. And uh, it, I, I stopped there. I had done a comedy show the night before, and someone brought me a rose, a single rose. But I, I didn't know what to do with it. It would just die out. So I said, I, I'm going to take it over to Mel Blanc. So I dropped it, and I had this little moment that I stood in front of Mel Blanc's grave and I put the rose right there on top of it and I was just talking to him, you know? And I was just telling him how much I appreciate what he did and everything I would have loved to have been back in the era where he was doing voices, where he could go do radio shows, real radio shows and, and different voices and nobody really cared what you looked like because you could be anybody at any time. And as I'm explaining this and saying how much I said, I just wish you were here today. Suddenly, outside, because you can hear the cars going around the cemetery, somebody hit one of those car horns, a novelty car horn, and went, and I was like, the, the goose flesh just started coming up. It was like, yeah, thanks, Mel. Good talking to you. Take care. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, but that was very cool. So Mel Blank, anything with him or around him. Uh, how much time do we have? We have no more time. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Thank you for coming to Voice of Palooza. I'll be doing a panel at 12.30 tonight. If anybody wants to come and have some more fun, we'll keep your cards. I'll be giving away a pair of tickets to uh, anybody who can do the best impersonation of any of my characters. I'll be giving away a pair of tickets to a Washington Capitals game later tonight at 12.30, so come on by. Thank you all.